easiest and the hardest subjects at school. They're the same thing. If it sounds crazy, good. I need you to forget about everything you believe to be true about school. Can you do that? What do you think? Out of all the classes you've ever taken from physical education to AP physics, which one do you think has a special property that makes it the hardest subject in all of high school? So by now, I think you have a sixth sense telling you that the answer kind of has to be math, right? And yes, it is. But the reasons why go so much deeper than just numbers or algebra or geometry. And if you're a student, it is so, so important that you really understand exactly what's going on here. So imagine you're studying for a history test. Your teacher has told you that the topics that are coming out are going to be World War I, World War II, and the Declaration of Independence. I'm not American, but apparently that's kind of important to you guys. Try to answer the following question. What are the exact questions that are gonna come out on your test. What am I talking about? Well, if your class notes had 50 pages of information, then there's no way your teacher can really put anything in the test that's not found on those 50 pages. So if you just memorize those 50 pages, don't worry, link to that video at the end. But if you just managed to memorize the scope, you'd pretty much guarantee yourself an A on that test. It would be impossible for a student to come up with a fact about history unless they had seen it before. Now you probably see where I'm going with this, but hold on, because I want you to really understand this metaphor. Every math problem is just like a puzzle. Math tests aren't just about recalling facts from your memory. Every page in your notes every theorem that you've been given, every past paper, they're all just pieces in the bigger puzzle. Sometimes the puzzle only has a few pieces. If you take an AP math class, some of the puzzles might have a hundred pieces. But in real math, it goes far, far beyond this. Take any of the most famous unsolved problems in all of math. Maybe you've heard of some, the Riemann hypothesis or twin prime conjecture. How many basic puzzle pieces do you think it would take to solve one of these problems? A few thousand, a few million? Well, that's the thing, we don't know. But even crazier than that is that we don't know if these problems can be solved in the first place. Imagine you're trying to build a puzzle and you don't know which pieces to use, you don't know how many pieces to use, and you don't even know if the puzzle can be created in the first place. So, why is all of this so important? Well, I am getting there, but first we have to answer the second part of the question that made you click on this video. And yes, that will make this whole paradox thing make sense. So, at this point, you're probably thinking, how can this guy go on and on about how hard math is, but then say that it's the easiest subject in the world? right? Well, what do we even mean by easiest and hardest? It sounds like a stupid question, but let me explain. Have you ever noticed that the smartest kids in the class are always the ones who seem to get a hundred on their math tests? So what do you think? Do you think that it's a coincidence that this is the one subject that all of the smartest kids seem to somehow not just do well in, but get close to perfect? Well, it's not a coincidence because there is something intrinsic to math that makes it possible to get a perfect score in every single time. So imagine this, you've put together all the pieces and you have solved the puzzle. What makes math different to any other subject is that as long as your solution shows the final picture clearly, you literally force your teacher to give you full marks for that problem. Hypothetically, even if you are their least favorite student, even if you dated their daughter, this is not from personal experience, but if all your steps are correct in your solution, they cannot do a thing about it. Again, you can probably see where I'm going with this. Think about the last time you wrote a history exam. What was the essay question on that exam? Think about how easy it would be for your examiner to find a flaw in that essay and mark it down from 100 to 90. Your conclusion wasn't strong enough. You should have phrased this differently. This sentence should have come before this sentence. There's literally an infinite amount of improvement that could have been made. Why? Because there is no perfect essay. There really is no perfect creative work. Now, I promised you that this would be super important for any student to understand. And here's why. On average, math grades are low. But the top students overall always come from the math subjects. Because those are the ones where you can get 100%. That is the paradox of this video. But 
if you are one of these kids, one of these kids at the top, you risk making a serious mistake. It's the mistake of assuming that math will always be these clear cut and easy to define problems. But think about what I said earlier, real world mathematics is not like that at all. Because if you go into math hoping that it's gonna be like high school or undergrad, you're gonna be in for a nasty surprise. But on the flip side, if you hate math because you find it too rigid, like it cramps your creative style, in the real world, math is a creative endeavor. And if you learn to get through the fundamentals, it could be something that you really enjoy one day. Now, the most important thing that I hope you learn from the video is not to memorize math like you do other subjects. So if you want to see how I study math and how it differs from other subjects, that video is coming up. So maybe subscribe so you don't miss it.